Hello everyone, welcome back to the Fascinating Woman Hit channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. So today we are talking about charm, specifically 10 ways to charm him or to get his attention. We're trying to focus more on some of the easier things that you can do to be more charming, to get his attention more that are not like really in depth. We have a lot of in depth things too that are really good, but these are really simple things that you can do. I think a lot of ladies too, they don't really understand the difference between charm and maybe say etiquette, which I think there's a lot of kind of etiquette things out there, which is great. We love talking about etiquette, but I think there's a difference between, don't you, between charm and etiquette. Yeah, there's some there's some a little bit kind of blurry crossover lines because if you're if you're a charming person, you're also going to have good etiquette. We're talking more specifically about charm directed at another person, in in this case him. When I think of charm, I think of likable. And most people that are really likable have really pretty good etiquette. But when it comes to men, I think that's where we want to kind of dig deeper today is like, what do men consider to be charming and likable? So we're just going to dig right into this list of 10 things you can do. Very, very simple, easy things that you can do to charm him. Number one. Okay. This one is, (laughs) I'm laughing because we had a really long, I mean, 45 minute conversation about this one with the the men that help us on our team. That's because I've done this. I've done this a lot. Yes. We all do this ladies, but alert him and politely when you need to change the subject. Can you explain this? What is okay, this the way? Okay. The way our brains are wired and women understand this with each other and we're okay with it. But the way our brains are wired is everything is connected to everything else. So switching subjects doesn't really feel like a subject switch. It's like it's it's a road that's going by this gas station and this store and it's, it's on this road. But to them, it's like, what? you suddenly change the subject. And so sometimes it's kind of jarring for a man when we do that without alerting him. And in the sense of saying, you know, do you mind if I change the subject for a minute? So he'll know you're doing it instead of what just happened. Ladies, we've all done this, (laughs) especially when we are, perhaps we have a lot on our minds. We want to share a lot. Maybe we're worried about something. We want to talk it out and we catch ourselves talking, talking, talking. And I think as one of the guys on our team described it, sometimes my wife will be talking to me about so many different things at once that when she's done, I feel like I've just been through a war and I've never heard anybody. (laughs) I've never heard anybody explain it that way. And what he said he would prefer is if you could say something along the lines of, do you mind if I change the subject? And it's not that you need his permission. This is my big takeaway. It's not about getting his permission. It's about, it's a verbal cue, letting him know we're taking a, (laughs) we're, we're moving. And I hope that you're ready to move into something else. It's just a reminder for him and the way he thinks to just shift into something else. And he may have a question, you know, not be ready to move on. And that's fine too. But it's just kind of a way of letting him know that you understand the way he thinks. He doesn't think maybe quite as quickly as you when, when it comes to all these subjects. And sometimes we say, at least I know I say, by the way, and it's not by the way at all. It's completely different. But to me, it's by the way. So if, if we were having if, if fascinating womanhood was only for ladies talking to ladies, we would never do this because we all right. understand this. We all understand the rules of it, right. but guys do not. And so that's why we put this in. Okay. The second one is give a sincere compliment when you are with another person, even someone you've just met. Can you explain this one? Yeah, this is so easy. We just, we just need to get more in the habit of it. You can usually find something to compliment them on that's sincere. That's not, that's just like, like, for instance, we had to buy a new water heater the other day. And I'm, I think I'm more taught myself this, but it was sincere. I noticed the guys and I said, thank you so much for lifting that. It's like 270 pounds. It's really heavy. And I said, I'm so grateful you guys are so strong that you could lift that in. And, and I knew it was a compliment and I knew that they took it because they're men. And they took it that way. So even if it's somebody who takes the groceries out to your car or checks something for you, you can can say, thank you for doing that. You do that so fast. How did you do that so fast? I think especially men, especially for the ladies out there that might be in the dating place in their life, if you're trying to attract a man, giving a sincere compliment is always a win. It's got to be sincere. It can't be like, it can't be a flirt because they'll... A lot of them will suspect what do you want. Right. And by the way, those of us that are those of us that are mothers of little boys, this works wonders on young men. If you're wanting a better relationship with your son, this works really well with them too. It's a good habit to get into if you and I'm glad you brought that up. If all the men in your life, brothers, uh, uncles, fathers, grandparents, this is part of understanding men. I mean, all people love compliments, but men are desperate for starving for compliment compliments on their masculinity. Uh, the third one is 
bring a small gift, which I think you all may know this as never show up empty handed. This is really important. And this isn't just for men. I think some of these can kind of cross over, but why is this important for men? It's charming. It's charming to do it. I've had I've had people do it to me and it's always surprising because I don't expect it. But when they do, it is so thoughtful. And when you do it, you get a reputation of being charming and it's small. And I mean, by small, like maybe a a little block of some kind of special cheese, Mm -hmm. or if you drink, maybe a bottle of wine or some special cookie that you found here. I, you know, I wanted to give this to you. It is not necessarily something to have for that dinner because you don't know what they planned. And if it's a party, you don't know what they plan for refreshments or anything, just something for the hostess. I like what you're saying about all of these being habits that you pick up, because if you're in the habit of not showing up empty handed, even if it's the tiniest, tiniest little gesture, you, and maybe perhaps you're not married, perhaps you're dating or something, you will keep that habit and hopefully charm a man down the road because it's already a habit. It's already something you're used to doing. And it's just, it's very selfless to, to always be thinking about other people and what could yes. I bring. And it doesn't have to be over the top. I think it could be something no. small, like you mentioned, but getting in the habit of this is very charming. And it's the most likable people that I've ever known. They do this. They, they're good at this. And I'm always kind of amazed at how good and how creative they are at this. So it has, it has practice it. Yeah, practice it. And it, you will be amazed how you feel. And you'll also be amazed at how you become more of a person who thinks about others. And as you think about others and how they feel, you'll be more charming. Yeah, that's a great one. Okay. The fourth one is saying thank you, but more formally. Now, when someone does something for you and we're, we're focusing more on men, but as you, as you gain a reputation of being a charming person, I I put this in here partly because Bob loves it that I send thank you cards. Mm -hmm. He loves that. And if you're married, it's even better because they get to they get to they get the benefit of like they're sending a thank you card even though they didn't it's you. <laughs> they get that they get the compliment of it. Yeah, yeah, I think this one can be a, an email. It could be something a little bit, you know, less time, but if you can hand hand write a note or a card, for me it's about I remember to do it as long as I stock thank you cards. I think that to me is the hardest part is like do I have them? Cuz you need to have them ready to go. If you don't have them, mm-hmm. Going to the store and buying one is just that one more thing you have to do to make it happen. So definitely try to keep a really nice set of thank you cards. They don't have to be expensive, but you can find some really lovely ones. And I, I co- kind of collect them and it's really fun. I don't have a lot of opportunities to give them, but when I do, I get kind of excited. So uh, the next one is the last word. Now this one is, this one's really important. You don't, for those of us who like things to be right and correct this can be kind of hard because when you realize you don't have to have the last word in a conversation you don't have to even if you know that they're wrong about something they said you don't have to make it right yeah we all know those those people that kind of have to have to have that last word and this doesn't even have to be in in a conversation if you're talking to someone online you might still want that last word and it's not always contentious but sometimes it is and even if it isn't Reminding yourself that you don't have to have that, I think is really valuable because charming people, likable people can allow the other person (laughs) to finish and then it's over and you don't have to take it. You don't have to have that spotlight. And you don't have to always win or you don't have to always be right. Even if you know they've said something that's not accurate, it doesn't really matter in, in today whether you've got accuracy down all the time. For those of us who who struggle with that, that's that's a really good to let yourself to let it go. It's like it doesn't matter. So you can let them win. Do you think that you are showing a man that you understand him by not having the last word? Yes. When you understand a person, even if you feel like they said something incorrect, you can go instead of whether it's correct or incorrect, you can go to their intent. And that's always something that's positive. What is their intent? Guys that are that are good people, if they're wrong about something, so what? Go to what, what do they mean by that? What is their intention here? Do they, do they want you to feel like they're competent? Because that's a big thing for men is to feel competent. So that's a small thing to give them and come like, wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. And I think men in particular really need you as a woman to understand their intent because they're not quite as strong with verbal skills as we are. So this one's really important. You're really, it's a tiny thing in a way, but it's a big thing to him that you're not mm-hmm. taking that last word. I love that one. Um, the next one is the way you smell. How does this fall under charm? <laughs> it's kind of what? It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy if you don't smell good to well, understand. Yeah. Some of these things are conversational and then some of them aren't. So how does that why does this fall into the list? Why is it so important? Um, now if you're with somebody it's it's virtual, you should still smell good because it affects your self-esteem just for you. 
but but when you're just particularly with when you're with somebody in person it's it's a charming thing people feel comfortable around a person who smells good. Now it can be just smelling clean. It doesn't have to be perfume. It can just be the smell of clean. Yes. And I think, I think this also goes hand in hand with not putting on too much. I, you know, we all know those people that have put on too much perfume. Those ladies that are just, you walk by them in the store and you're like, woo. <laughs> I think you also want to, like yeah, you don't like want to go, you don't want to go too overboard on the perfume either. I, I like what you're saying about smelling clean. And then if you want to do a perfume, I think that that's really wonderful, but keep in mind that those really strong perfumes, some of the more, more expensive perfumes, you really don't need very much. And if you're going for some of those uh, more elevated brands, just not too much and make sure your hair smells good. I think, I've met so many, worked with so many people where they smell good and you get kind of close to them or they give you a hug or something and their hair doesn't smell clean. So and men in particular, if you want, especially if you're trying to attract a man and your hair doesn't smell, but the rest of you smells good. He's not gonna, he's not gonna want to be around you. <laughs> the next one is, offering to help. You know, um, that's, this is another one that I, I was prompted to put it in because Bob has mentioned it over the years, how he loves that, that when I offer to help someone, even if we haven't, uh, we don't know them very well, they invite you over, offer to help or offer to, uh, or just take your plate away and, and just do those little things. And um, when you're invited somewhere, offer to do something. And if you're with a guy, he'll notice it. Mm -hmm. that you offer. You don't just sit down and let somebody serve you and not offer. They can decline, which is fine, but you, but to offer, let me help. Would you let me to carry something? I think all charming women, I think about those Southern Bell etiquette videos that I've watched or books that I've read. And that's just one of the kind of like basics about being charming is being helpful. Um, can I help with anything? Is there any help you need in the kitchen? Do you need help setting anything up? If you're meeting your husband's or your fiance's or boyfriend's parents for the first time, offering to help, like that's just, oh, they love that. They love that. So just, I think it's just such a small thing and everyone's probably thinking, well, that's really simple, but we forget to do it. We definitely, I mean, we all have our times. So we just forget to do it. And I love that this is on the list because I think it's also kind of dying a little bit with this world we live in of everything being virtual and FaceTime and stuff. You don't get a lot of opportunities to offer to help people. And so I love that it's a great reminder when you are with somebody. In and it's especially good if you can notice something and say, can I carry this particular thing for you? Can you like me to take that to the table? Instead of having them have to find something for you to do, if you notice and say, would you yeah. like me to help carry out the food? Or can I help gather up something specific? Yes. Or, uh, you know, then that, that makes, then they, all I have to say is, yes, thank you. Yes. And if you're somebody that has some social anxiety or you're just kind of a tightly wound person, this is a really great way for you to distract yourself from your anxiety and offering to help is just going to relax you. So I, I just love this one. I think this one's a really good reminder. The next one is don't overstay your welcome. What does this mean? I think I know. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you, you I know, know what it means. And this happens when you are at someone's home. If you're in a restaurant, you don't tend to do it because it's a public place. But if you're at someone's home, and it would also be true if you're chatting with someone online, it's as though you're kind of in each other's space. Don't overstay and do it too long because the, the cues that I need to go sometimes are subtle. And being sensitive, we have the ability as women to sense these things sometimes quicker than men. It's better to leave before they're kind of looking at the clock. Well, this can be even in a conversation, this can be yeah. um, conversation with a man and you can tell, like you just said with his body language, that he is somewhere else. That's your chance to end it and, and pleasantly. But I think when it comes to more social settings, it can be tricky to tell, mm -hmm. say, if you're in a giant group, when it's time to go, it can be really delicate, but I think, you know, being paying attention to those body cues with the host or the hostess is probably the best thing you can do. Notice, if you know, this is one thing that I look for. If I notice that the host or the hostess or both start cleaning a lot, that's my kind of up oh, there. They're cleaning up. They're trying to clean. And it may not be the case for everybody that when, when they're cleaning, they're ready for things to wind down. It may just mean that they're trying to make the ambiance better. But I've noticed when I'm with a, like a larger group of people that that tends to be like, we, maybe we need to leave in about an hour or something like that. For those of you who, who bake, like me, when you make cookies, have you ever learned that cookies are done when you take the cookies out of the oven just before they look like they're done? Mm -hmm. And then they finish a little bit cooking on the counter. And that's when it's perfect. The same is true with leaving, knowing when to leave. When it's just before, if you can do it just before they're mm -hmm. truly ready to close down, mm -hmm. then that's very charming. Now, it takes some sensitivity, but 
we have the sensitivity if we just call on it, lady. So you can do that. If you can, if you can end the conversation or the thing just before, mm-hmm. when you begin to see the edges of the, of the conversation going brown, that's when you take it out. Now, when it, this comes to men specifically, because we're trying to tie most of these things specifically to men, right. when it comes to them, do you think that the shyer or the less confident man might need you to do a little extra here? Is this still a positive thing to do with a man? Say you're on a date with a yeah. guy and he's a little bit less confident. Is this one of those things where is it going to be a lot more work for you to figure that out? As you get to know him, it'll, it'll start to be easy. But in the beginning, it might, it might, because a, a shy man sometimes kind of acts like he doesn't want it to end. Right. And then you do. So that's a totally different situation. But if a guy is really kind of, you can tell he's uncomfortable, he may have other things he has to accomplish or do something else he promised he would do. And he doesn't say anything. There's still so many body and social cues that yeah. people get off that are nonverbal that you can pick up on if you just notice. But if you can manage to say, well, it's been so great. Thank you for asking me out or whatever. However you wind down, let's say it's a date. Or let's say it's your your spouse. And, and you're, he's wanting to wind down <laughs> one of those conversations. You, there's a lot of cues. The worst one is pulling out his phone and starting to I was to look just going to say that with my husband. I know I've overstayed my welcome with him when he pulls his phone out. He also has these things that he'll say. Say, oh really? And he'll look down. <laughs> I know, I know, I lost him. I know, I yeah, lost him. So if you can pay attention to those cues, it also won't hurt your feelings. You go, oh, I overstayed my welcome. Oh, yeah. Rather, oh, he's ignoring me, or he's oh, he's being rude to me. No, you just overstayed your welcome. <laughs> like, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you can, you can, what you can do is just say, oh, well, it's been so great talking to you. I got to go get the laundry. I got to do something. Thanks so much. And then he'll feel relieved and not know that you saw the cues anyway. Yeah. Okay. The next one is the only person in the room paying attention to him as if he's the only person in the room. Can you explain that? This is a, this is such a good one. It's I've known people in my life and I don't say that I have this because I haven't, I compare myself to some of the people I've known who are so good at this people. I've known that when they're talking to you, it's like everything you're saying is like, you just want rapt attention as though your favorite celebrity of all time is talking Mm -hmm. to you. And they're telling you something about your life and you don't want to forget any of it. That kind of a feeling like, tell me about this or some really amazing experience they had. And you're wanting to, you think he's finally telling me about it. But if you can, if you can manage, I've known people who do that with ordinary conversations. They, they kind of lean forward as they're talking to you. They maybe kind of go like, like this and, and their eyes are just kind of glued on you. If you can act like they're the only person in the room in the conversation, like you're so, not so much that you're looking at them like they're, so handsome, but that they are so interesting. Like, I don't want to miss a minute of this. Yeah. I think this can be delicate because you don't want to, this isn't about being obsessive and this isn't about being ignoring other people in the room either, because that wouldn't be polite to ignore. But I think it's about what it says, what you said earlier about the, I like what you compared it to a celebrity. If there were a celebrity in the room, you might just be more interested and you just might be more glued, but you wouldn't, hopefully you wouldn't want to be obsessive. (laughs) I guess there's some of us that might be depending on who it is, but you just want to show them how, how interested you are in them. And that has to do with eye contact. I think you mentioned something about leaning in. It's about leaning in on the conversation. It's a lot to do with body language, actually. Well, and there's one I'm thinking when you mentioned that you don't want to ignore other people. I know this one particular person, it was a guy his wife was like that too, though. But when when he would talk to me, if somebody else would come up, he'd still be looking at me and he'd, he'd kind of touch them on the arm and say, hold that thought just a second and I'll get to you. So he would acknowledge them while still listening to me and not offending them. Yeah. He'd, he'd touch them like, you're important too, but I got to finish this thought. And there's, I've known at least two people who are so good at this and it yeah. was natural for them. And I've always, I've always wanted to be more like that. So I try to emulate some of the things that they did. And they, I don't think anyone taught them. They're just that way. Well, what I love about this one is that it doesn't matter what your personality is. You don't have to be super outgoing. You can be shy. Mm -hmm. You can be anywhere in between to pay attention to someone and let them know that you really are interested in them. It doesn't matter what kind of background you have, how you grew up. You can just practice this. And gosh, it just makes, especially a man, it's going to make him feel like a million dollars. It's going to make him feel so special. The key is to just making sure you don't overstay your welcome. Talking about what we talked about before. It's not too long and you're not being obsessive. (laughs) Well, obsessive has to do with how you feel. If you're truly interested in them and what they're saying, not what they can do for you or, oh, I want to spend more time with them or things like that. You're you're focused on them and and their needs, not your own. And then if you're focused on their needs, you won't be obsessive. 
And I will say, if you're focused on their needs, hopefully you will retain. This is a big part of this one. Is retain? This is almost like a subcategory of it. But retaining what they're telling you. If you're saying, "I I want to hear all these things about you," you're leaning in, they're talking, but then you're just letting it go out the door. Chances are, later on the road, you might refer back to something here. He told you you didn't remember, you didn't, you weren't listening, or you were, you know, you kind of were pretending like you were listening, but you weren't really listening. <laughs> So yeah. think about retaining that information too and say, oh, I remember the last time we, we talked, you mentioned that you were doing this. How did that go? Re- retaining that is part of being a really charming woman too. Wow. Well, she remembered all those things about me. She remembered my name. She remembered this, you know, those kind of things. I've seen some people when, when someone comes up and says, hey, you need to, um, so-and-so just arrived or so-and-so is just leaving. You need to say goodbye. Say that kind of a situation. And the person you're talking to is in the middle of telling you something. You can say, don't go anywhere. Just hold that thought. I want to hear the rest of it. Just let me take care of this. That will allow you to, to show that you're sincere, but you have something you have to do and they won't take offense. Yes. I love that. Hold that thought. That's really good. Okay. And then the last one is using phrases such as tell me more or I'm all ears. Can you explain that one? Or you can say, and what happened next? What did they say? Yeah. Now that's, that kind of fits in with the one we just did yeah. about listening. That shows you're engaged. It's, it's not just listening. It's, it's verbally showing that you're engaged and you want to know more. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Yeah. There's so many that you can say. I'm like, really? You, really? You have to tell me all about this. Or well, Why is this important with men? Because of their need for competence, their need to feel validated. And that they, I mean, it's somewhat true for all people. Most men, by far most men, I don't dare say all men, but most men are starving for this. They've had way under the amount that they need that they can handle. And so anything you you give them is like they're starving in the desert. And we're not necessarily talking about a love interest, although in FW, if you're single, we are. But if, if you're, or even if you're married, your husband is starving for this. I have to say too, this may sound silly to some women because it may sound like you're almost borderline being condescending. So it has to be genuine. You can't just, oh, oh, I watched this video the other day and I need to say this. You need to really find what works for you. But I think particularly when, when I'm talking to women, I don't feel like I need that, especially if I'm talking to a woman who I can really read her facial expressions. Like I know when I'm talking to you, I can tell when you're interested because I know the facial expressions that you're interested in. I don't think men do that. Not as much. I don't think that they read our facial expressions. I think they really do need us to say, oh, I'm interested in this. Please tell me more. I, I'm intrigued. Because like you said, it, they, they feel more competent and they feel kind of more confident to keep going. Whereas with us, we kind of might not need it depending on the girl we're talking to because we kind of see, we, we, we see understand. it. We feel yeah. it. <laughs> Does that make yeah. sense? I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah. And if you say like, you actually did that. You got to tell me all about this. Just sit down and just tell me the whole thing. That's really um, validating yeah. to a man, uh, especially if you well, you have to mean it. If you don't, disingenuous is comes. It actually is kind of an insult. Yeah, yeah. You have to so. find what works for you with this one, and, and and read the person. Depending on the man, you know, you may not need to do hardly any of it. But yeah, I think this is a really good one, and it's not one that we discuss very often. It's a really easy one to figure out if you just practice it. Well, that's our list. Those are our 10 things that you can do to be more charming around particularly men, but just be more charming to get other people's attention, to be more likable. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything that you would like to add to this list, we would love to hear from you down below. Drop a comment down there. We always try to read every comment. All of the books that Dixie sells and workbooks are attached to this video. If you want to learn more about fascinating womanhood, you definitely need to get all of our reading materials. There's so much more to learn if you pick up a copy of our books. And we are here every week. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe. You can help our channel grow and you will know when we have another video come out. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.